Hello legends, if you've been wondering where is Aaron, I have to say, who have him here? Hi there everyone and welcome to yet another World of Warships Back to Port podcast. As you all know by now, we have yet another World of Warships CC with us today. Where are you, Aaron? Welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you, uh, you know, catching me on the, the podcast here. It's it's gotten pretty uh, popular over the last few uh, episodes here. Yeah, now we've had a lot of people with us, and um, we're just happy to have you as yet another guest, a guest on the show. Well, again, I appreciate you having me, and uh, whatever you got for me, let's 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 get to it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm I'm gonna crunch my knuckles back here. We have to know where you started out your journey in World of Warships. Um, would you mind telling us how you got started with your channel and how you got involved with World of Warships? Sure, of course. Um, I actually was involved with the the PC version uh, simply through YouTube videos. I I don't know. I always had a fascination with like naval warfare, naval combat, and history and things like that. And I ended up watching a bunch of these videos, mainly from Fly Daily, like a long time ago. I think it was like 2015, and he just he was he just had cool content and uh i don't know him and flambass eventually I, I watched like daily and then all of a sudden i was like searching my xbox one day and i found that this game was available it was like right at, as soon as it launched uh, i think i was like two weeks into the uh, atlanta campaign and i was like oh cool and then that's kind of how i uh got into legends and how i started my youtube channel was I saw Spartan and t Bowl and I believe a few others, and I was like, I, I could do that, you know. I, I think I'm pretty decent at the game, and I I think I was almost getting frustrated at times, you know, being a solo player majority when I first started, and, and seeing just, you know, people, like, leave a cap or something like that with, like, two seconds left, and I was like, you know, maybe if I can help one person or, you know, try, try to get a positive message out there, then... Maybe, you know, I'm doing my, my part to, to, to help better the community. But that's kind of how I got into the YouTube side of it. And I enjoy doing it. I enjoy making videos and having that, I guess, slightly above average gameplays there. I've been actually watching some of your videos. And the most recent one I watched um, at that point uh, was the sh- showcasing of the ZF6. Uh, it may be too early to ask, but what is your impression of the ship? Will it be good enough for the upcoming tier seven ranked season? I, I think in the right player's hands, it definitely will. What would be? Um, you there are some other competitive ships as you and I are both probably aware of. You know, with with hydro, you know, the hydro acoustic search or sonar capabilities that would be very useful for ranked. Um, but the the guns on that ship are very hard hitting, and with a reload booster, even if you know, let's say a Lightning or the Z the Z23, you know, can catch you with the Hydro. If you can gun him down quickly, they won't stand a chance. And, you know, depending on the number of destroyers, if it's just one, once you lose that destroyer advantage, the game, in most cases, is, is already won. So I, th- I think it, it can be a very competitive ship in the right player's hand. I'm, I only played like 10 or so games in it, um, so I, I, I need to get a few more to get a full... I feel like a fair assessment of the ship and I'm not the best in destroyers but I like I said I think in the right players hands it, it can be a very strong ship I did notice something while you were uh, busy talking about the ship though it was the turning radius of it and the slow turning of the ship itself which made it a lot more difficult to play than like any other DD yeah yeah it's um I, I definitely noticed that I think I mentioned it in my video I was like I I enjoy the ship, but it turns. It's similar to the German ships or German destroyers in the fact that it's like, you know, it's it feels a little sluggish. The rudder and and you know the base 35 knot top speed. So it's it's not uh, it's not going to be a you know a ship that is very very good at knife fighting. But if you can if you can control the engagement and, and make the other player make the mistake first, you know you put yourself at an angle or. or you know, with cover, then uh, th- those guns can can really make up for. I feel like the lack of maneuverability there. We all know that you play with a lot of YouTubers and streamers, and do you have any favorites uh, you would like you like to play with on a daily basis? Um, and these guys, would you? 
up in a beer with them, you know, and have a barbecue with them on a weekend top top of people. Uh, yeah, I um, I think all of the the CCs are, are awesome, and, and a lot of other streamers too. Um, I'm sure a lot of people that watch me know that I play with Peak pretty much every day. Uh, him and I are two two ed you know two sides to the same coin. He I, I feel like I'm the cruiser player, he's the battleship player, uh, but we just play well together. Hopefully we can get um, crossplay soon, and I can expand that even more. You know, Chili, Meta, you know, a lot of the other CCs, and just a lot of my my player bases as well. I try to, I'll try to do some count-ins and some sub days where I'll try to play with a lot of my player base. But yeah, I, I hope uh, we can get like a an event organized to go see one of the ships here in, in America. We were thinking about the USS Alabama, maybe, to where we could oh, go go and have a beer. And, uh, a burger or something that would be that would be a really fun time well throughout our you know all of us playing the game um, we know that you become and all of us become very frustrated and sometimes we might lose our composure you know uh, but in your experience what is the biggest and fundamental problems or mistakes that other players make when playing uh, all the warships yeah I mean <laughs> I'm a I think I'm a a golden example of losing my composure at times if you've seen any of my streams I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination but um, I I think a lot of games are won or lost honestly in the first couple minutes uh, with, with team distribution something that just and I realized this very early on is is your initial positioning you know for example if you spawn on a side and say it's domination you know ABC just as a quick example if you spawn on a side and you leave your spawn just to go on c side because you like that side well now you're just creating this kind of imbalance and imagine if the other two players at a do this now you've completely given up a for free and now you guys are caught in a potential crossfire so i i, I really think that initial positioning uh is is just a quick tip you know that we're without going into too much detail that that uh that a player's you know should think about you know their mini map awareness to, to help them if they're looking to improve oh, well there's been these the new update as well and there's been some changes made to the recent uh, you know with, with the game in itself and in, even some new additions what is your take on the recent changes uh, and especially with the italian dd is it even worth it you know, for the for the global xp I talking about the the Paulo Yolo Emilio. I when I first saw it, I was I was honestly like, this is going to be such a waste. But um, as you know, Wargaming gives the CCs a week to test, um, you know, the campaign ships and, and some others. And I was like, you know what? I'll try it. And I actually I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, people just you have a lot of health, so you can get that that Yolo capability. But if you run two of them in a division together. And you just go straight at battleships they they can't kill you quick enough and it's truly you know why it has that name of the yolo emilio um, and then speaking on the uh topic of the new update I, I think it was a good update i'm glad that they said they fixed the uh battleship turret pen anomaly um to me that was you know, we all have our gripes and stuff, and I know that that was something they're working on, but to me that was something that just... I don't... Uh, that was like a major issue, in, in my opinion, and I feel like that should have been should have been caught, but I'm glad they fixed it, and we're, we're rolling back to normal. Well, <clears throat> neither of us have the uh, ability to make any changes to the game, but we do have our own opinions. And if you had to choose one thing to change, what would you change? Yeah, um, well, you know, to, to counter what I just said, I, I really do think Wargaming is doing in a, a decent job with the game. A lot of us, as you said earlier, and, and you know, we all know, as my audience knows, we, we all have a lot of complaints at times. Um, but I think Wargaming has done a pretty good job up to Tier 7 uh, with this game. And my biggest uh, gripe or complaint is, is Legendary Tier, honestly. Um, and just how they how players are able to get a legendary ship. And while uh, someone who doesn't have any ships, or maybe one or two ships, it would take them, I think the, the calendar was like 352 days or something like that, 
Someone who only plays like three or four games can have access to one of the most powerful ships, some of the most powerful ships in the game. I um, mean, I don't think that's maybe but one or two players. I just think it could have been maybe manipulated in a way to where, you know, you, you have to have like, let's say the Grosser Kerfers, for example. If, you know, you, you just need 10 wins in the Bismarck either an AI or standard, just to unlock the GK or the, you know, the Grosser Kerfers. And I think that maybe would have helped a, a tiny bit with with some of the uh, the lopsided victories at Legendary Tier, but like I said, I think Wargaming has done an above average job with the game in itself. It's, you know, Legends is supposed to be like a, a shorter or a condensed version of the PC. And while, you know, we all would like to have the 10 tiers, I feel like they've done an, a pretty decent job of, of compressing it to a quick and 15 minute version of the game. Yeah, I, I do believe so myself. Even with the CVs being introduced and everything, uh, I think they did a wonderful job about the balancing of them as well, uh, unlike with the PC version, of course. Yeah, I, the carriers, especially in this most recent update, I think actually got, I think that adjustment to the, the, the air group actually kind of hurt the carriers in a way, you know, because now people, you know, players are getting deplaned a lot more quickly, um, which which can really affect late game scenarios if that, you know, if the destroyer survives or, you know, what have you. But yeah, I, I think they're, the, like you said, the carriers are very well balanced compared to some of the videos I've seen from a few other PC streamers, but over to the community questions then and of course guys please do not kill me for if i do mention your name incorrectly um, some of them might be statements but we'll, we'll discuss them uh, <laughs> bad mofo stang definitely we watching this one uh, with him in it never realized how immature he was until he sent one of my guys at uh, division with a salty message in a standard game <laughs> okay so perhaps you may may, may want to discuss that point sure sure i mean i'm you know like i said i'm i'm not perfect by uh, any stretch of the imagination i uh i'm not exactly sure i mean maybe that was a long time ago um and i don't think i've ever sent anybody hate mail or or like a salty message uh maybe like my first my second day play i don't know uh, but I've, I've, I feel like I've only ever sent, you know, someone like a message like just, you know, if we were winning on points or something like that and if they die then we lose and I'm like, just live, just live. Or like maybe like, I mean, I can't even think, I, I've sent you know, people send me messages and I'll say like GG or something like that, but I, I can't remember the last time I've gone out of my way to send somebody a message. I, I just don't have, have time, but I'm, I apologize if you uh, thought I sent your a mate a, a salty message there, partner. I think that'll do. <laughs> you know what they say. I mean, it's like, like myself, and I'm, I'm, I don't normally do this, but I mean, I'm also human, and I also get frustrated with the game sometimes. And I've, from what you say, I've sent worse messages, so don't feel bad at all. Rabbit Squirrel 22. Uh, the one game I ran into him and Spartan on the team, he rage quit because his team was down a few ships. <laughs> I don't think, I don't know, I don't think you would ever do that. I, uh, I can't say I've ever purposely rage quit, um, but my internet is, I live in a town of 400 people, and I actually play on a mobile hotspot. It's, it's set up very nice, um, but on my stream last night, I lagged out twice. So, I probably lagged out on what this person is saying. So, I, I've never never rage quit uh still alive but if you see a zero score by my name i probably lagged out so that's probably what that was i know the feeling i've been there and i'm still there <laughs> well funny enough the next one um chili game 17. if someone was bad at the game and asking for help what would you tell them okay so i i'm gonna have to say this for my guy chili but uh you need to get good no, no i'm just kidding we we talked about that one before but um a serious a serious answer would be uh, play each class of ships uh, you know starting out i would get maybe if you like the americans or you know 
go through the ships, see what you like. For me, it was honestly the Japanese cruisers uh, because they had torpedoes. And I was playing them just so wrong in the beginning. But I figured that out because I played the line through. Um, and then I switched to the American battleships. And that was when the game first came out. So obviously the Iowa was, was king at that time. And, and really just focusing on team play as well. Uh, a lot of people think you... And, you know, even the CCs are guilty of this clickbaiting and all this stuff. Uh, you know, high damage games. I had one today, but... Even if you just support your team as a destroyer player, for example, spotting the enemy destroyer and, and the other ships for your team to shoot from behind cover or from, from smoke, you may get a very low score and even no damage. But if you if you prevent your team from taking damage with those spots, then you're exponentially helping your team more than getting you know a dev strike on a battleship at the back of the map. And I feel a lot of players, not not it's not their fault that they don't because let's face it you know we've all been in a game where everyone's like well every man for himself you know and and that's just how the game is at times but if you if you really focus on team play and supporting your team i think that is some advice that i just want to toss out there i think that's very good um advice that yeah uh, I, don't, I don't think i've ever actually thought about it that way it's, it's very good very good advice <laughs> definitely well Exclude XZX. Uh, any favorite ships, and what do you want to see for an upcoming legendary ship? Well, I believe this person's in my stream often, so they should know my favorite ships. Um, right, my, my most played ship and my favorite ship in the game is the USS Baltimore. Um, I'm an American heavy cruiser guy through and through. Uh, I like being able to take a punch and also dish out a huge punch. Um, I think cruisers are the most versatile class in the game, so I like a lot of them. Um, I think the Cleveland is also one of my favorites, but that's kind of the, that's kind of easy mode, <laughs> uh, as we all know. But um, and what do I want to see upcoming legendary ships? And honestly, uh, I used to I used to watch this search this ship almost every day before I got this game. It's the USS Des Moines. Um, I really hope that that ship comes to the game, but. It just sounds awesome. It, it just 203 millimeter auto loading cannons on, on a an American heavy cruiser that can take a punch. Watch out when I get that ship. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, I had this uh, interview with Robin a couple of weeks ago, and um, it didn't sound very good for the Des Moines. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, it didn't sound oh, very no. good. Um, if it does come, if it does ever come. This, it's going to be so nerfed because it, it it is so OP on PC and what we see there will most probably not be what we get on console if it does ever come. I had a I had a feeling I I watched a little bit of that one, but um, I, I hope it does. And you're right though; it's just because of how they kind of squish this game down from ten to seven or eight if you count legendary. I think you know you're right. It would. It would kind of break the game, but like I said, I hope that it comes in some form or another. I kind of want to say it would be like the Udachi Times Three <laughs> when that came out. Yeah, that would uh, that would Udachi Apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, and I was one of them. I was guilty. Well, Kaiser Zen. He's actually got three questions, but we've kind of already you know touched on two of them, so I'm just going to ask the one question. And he's asking, what got you into the naval history and into warships? Well, we've got the second part of that question, so we just stick to the naval history then. So, I, I don't exactly remember how, but I remember bo both of my, my grandparents served um, in, in the armed services here in the United States, so I, I have a lot of respect and, and admiration for for history and, and in all forms of it, my, my papa was in the Air Force and my, my grandfather was in the, the Army, I believe. Um, not during, my papa was in World War II, actually. And he flew, I forget, the Super Flying Fortresses, I believe, at the very end of the war. So I don't I don't think he ever saw too much intense fighting. Um, you know, thank, thank goodness. But always a lot of respect for that and, and just cool learning about these stories. You know, like one of my favorite is the story of the USS Johnston, how a Fletcher class destroyer 
outmanned and outgunned, you know, a, a fight of epic, epic proportions, how they just turned right into the, the Yamato and an armada of, of, of IJN ships and just, you know, defended its, its fleet. But a lot of, you know, stories like that, and then I guess that kind of carried over into World of Warships. Well, um, the Flying Dutchman, I know him actually very well, very good guy. His question would be, what would you like to see added to the game? For example, a new game mode or a change to a certain game mode or just a specific statistics that would improve the game for you? you know, for example, me, I'd like to have Epicenter even more. Well, yeah, you uh, you just you just took one of my answers. Is, and I think it actually is in the game, this update at Tier 4, I believe, uh, would be the Epicenter game mode. Um, and honestly, I would I would remove capture the base. I, I think capture the base, especially on like two brothers or something like that, gets people into this team deathmatch most damage mindset, which in some cases is how you win the game. You know, there's more than one way to win. If you kill all the enemy ships, obviously you win. But that doesn't happen every game. So I, I think I would focus more on a team dynamic set of you know, maps or objectives, you know, like you said, epicenter, or, um, you know, more, you know, less capture the base and more domination. And then what was the second part of that? Statistics? Yes, so, or just more s specific statistics that would improve the game for you. I, I Honestly, yes. I would really like to know, like, a lot of the values that are available for PC, such as the Sigma or the... Um, the shell velocity and different things like that because that can actually you know as you know um, but a lot of people don't know like the the sigma and the accuracy you know i remember a long time ago and i, I don't want to bring up this but someone made a comment on my john bart video it's like well you, you know it's like you weren't you didn't he said something like you weren't aiming where the citadel was and i was like well the, the john bart has high velocity shells and some of the worst grouping some of the worst vertical dispersion in the game but I couldn't back that fact up because it's not, it's only available for, for PC. Now, they, I, both, you know, we're both aware that they bring a lot of the same statistics over from PC, but there's just this slight gap between PC and this game um, that really can hinder your play. For example, the Baltimore, my, my most played ship. For a good portion of time when I was playing it, it only had a 25 millimeter bow. And I didn't know that because I wasn't, you know, active on Reddit and active on Discords and different things like that. And the armor viewer wasn't in the game at the time. So I was just going off of videos that I saw on PC and facts that I saw on PC. I'm like, oh, this has a 27 millimeter bow as it did on PC. So I was under the impression that I could bow tank 15 inch guns and below, but that was not the case. Um, now eventually they did release that it had a 25 and they buffed it to 27 and now we have the armor viewer which is a huge addition um so you know players can see at the very least you know with the 14.3 uh, you know overmatch rule what their bow can withstand yeah uh, i personally also been screaming for that armor view and it's definitely helped me out as well um all feet. Is there a nation that you feel is underrepresented in the game? I probably the Germans, if I if I had to. Up until recently, but I mean, recently with the addition of the Parsifal, I think the Germans got <laughs> more than uh, more than they not more than they bargained for. But I think they got a decent representation. I think the Bismarck is even with some of the buffs is still. I think it should be a little bit better ship than it is in, in the game, and maybe I'm just not good at German battle cruisers. Um, but I feel like you know, with how historically mighty the Bismarck was, it, I feel like it should be almost how the Iowa was when this game first came out. You know, it was like Iowa just bulldozing everything. So, and I understand you have to have balance. You can't just make you know one ship the the ultimate uh, dreadnought there, but. I think uh, I think the Germans before the the carriers were a little underrepresented. I personally, you know, I, I would say the same thing. And it's, it's, we're coming back to the all two year ago 
conversations we had on Reddit and on Discord saying that fix the Bismarck. <laughs> it's not fixed. Yeah. I do still yeah. feel, in my, this is again my own personal opinion, uh, that the Bismarck is underwhelming, especially with the secondaries. It's supposed to be the most devastating ship when it comes to the secondaries. And it's just not performing in that, in that specific sense. That should be feared as much. I, I, I agree 100%. I, the while like when this game when the Bismarck first came out you you know all of us are aware like everybody wanted to run a secondary build but it was just a fireworks show like they they didn't hit anything I mean you might get one hit but they they didn't do enough damage and I, I think they, they could tweak it in just a way to where it, it might work without being like ridiculously overpowered but yeah I, I think I think you know guns that are on cruisers and destroyers should do more than like 200 damage every 60 seconds well I've, I've got a very interesting question here from Jace the Dead why are you called where are you Aaron <laughs> <laughs> honestly um, I just I created an Xbox to play with my friends um, or I bought an Xbox and then just created an account and I was like what would be a funny name and for those that don't know, the, the Key and Peel comedy sketch, um, it's called Substitute Teacher. And uh, in the, the sketch, I think, you know, he, he's pronouncing all of their names wrong. He's like, where is D-Nice at? You know, Denise. And I just kind of copied that. And, and in the sketch, he goes, where are you, A-A-Ron? And uh, yeah, that's, that's where it happened. Interesting. Um, Alec Tev, 006, Aaron. Would you agree that the, the development team of Legends has perhaps boxed themselves into a corner in ret retrospect to the legendary cruiser armor values by their massive buffs to both Alaska from the 27mm bow to Anstern PC for the 32mm and now the Worcestershire for 25 bow and stern for PC to a whopping 32 yeah by making the most this is a long question so bear with me no worries. <laughs> by making the most recent and mere light cruiser as a formality armored as a tier 7 or tier 7 battleship doesn't this somewhat or somewhat force them to make otherwise uh, give the US heavy cruisers like the Des Moines the same 32 mil uh, extremities uh, when it comes to the Beru if it ever comes again so say nothing of the 30 mil overbuffed Edinburgh leading to will seem to be at least a 30 mil bow uh, or a stern on the Minotaur at some point your thoughts on this possibly concerning trend and the future of legendary tier cruisers in the general would be appreciated sorry that's a long question Thank you, Alec. That's all right. Yeah, that was an excellent question. And I actually believe I remember him commenting on on one of my vids about the Wooster a long time ago. He's very intelligent. You know, I believe he has a very good understanding of, of the game. And he, he does have a pretty good point. Um, but I think, I think Wargaming did a decent job of... I, I don't know how to answer this question the, the, to the most effective. When I, when I got the Wooster both in the rental phase a while ago and recently as Wargaming gave them to the CCs to test. I, I do pretty well in, in US light -like cruisers. I mean, the, the the Cleveland is, you know, its nickname is the Cheatland um, just because of its underwater citadel. I think Wargaming did a pretty good job of making the Wooster strong enough to be in legendary tier uh, with its incredible rate of fire and, and high DPM as well as you know, with the HE, but obviously, you know, if you guys have tried the AP on that thing, I, I think I hit a Conqueror for 20k, but on a close broadside, so um, the DPM on that thing is, is incredible, but if you actually look at the ship in the armor viewer, you can, it does have a 32mm plate, but the sides are exposed when you look at it bow on, so it would be difficult to hit, a, you know, a far away, you know, to, to get that side plating, but the side plating is only 25 millimeters, um, so most battleships at tier seven and legendary tier can punch that um, 
at, at any angle per, per the overmatch rule. Um, and especially with ships like the Yamato, or well, only the Yamato with its 18.1 inch guns able to overmatch any 32mm uh, plating, I don't think it's too much of an issue. But to, to round out that question, it, it could present some problems with them having to match, like you said, the Des Moines or the Minotaur, um, you know, some, some very powerful ships with similar bow platings like the 30 or the 32 which would make any ship except for the Yamato kind of obsolete in terms of, of bow tanking. So it's a very good question. I don't know if I answered it exactly how you did. No, but I right think... now, um, in terms of... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I think you got it perfectly. It's, it's obvious Alec does know what he's talking about, you know, especially with coming to the mechanics and uh, especially with the armament of each and every ship. Yeah, yeah. But what I was going to say is the... Um, the second part, or the third part of that, I guess, is um, legendary tier cruisers. I think we need, I think we need three legendary tier cruisers right now um, in the game. I don't really care what they are. I just there, there's four destroyers, three battleships, and I guess there's now two cruisers in the Alaska. But the Alaska has such a slow reload that it can't really adequately deal with some of the, the crazy destroyers that are currently in the game, even with you know an American 30-second radar. So I, I think we, we need a lot more, even if they're not radar cruisers, just cruisers overall at legendary tier to kind of balance it out. In my opinion, I'm sure some people think that it's okay as it is, but that's just kind of what, what my thoughts are on that. Well, let's be honest. The Alaska is a mini Iowa. It hits for a little <laughs> less, but it's got better maneuverability. It, yeah. <laughs> well, Bone Feezy is asking, you and Peek are obviously boys and play together often. How do you feel about him using your audio clips of you flipping out for his channel action animations? <laughs> That's a good question. I, I, I don't care, man. Like I said, I, I've i definitely, you know, as we talked about earlier, I've definitely made, you know, s some mistakes and, you know, I'm not the, uh, I'm not a poster boy for, for, uh, you know, I'm not role, I'm not going to be role model of the year anytime soon, but I, I like to believe that I'm good fun. You know, I'm very competitive, and that's where a lot of this draws from. But for him, you know, he, he gives me 20% of whatever he makes on stream. So we're, we're all good in that aspect about him using my audio. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, we will, we will link, def we'll definitely link all your, your channels, uh, you know, to the links below of, uh, of the podcast for the listeners to go and have a look and see. And if you guys are looking at, you know, to get a nice review of a ship uh, get an expert view from it and you know, try and because like I said I've seen some of uh, of uh, Aaron's uh, videos and he's got a very good mentality when it comes to map awareness and how to play a specific ship in a specific scenario which would benefit you most of all that's the biggest thing about this game is that awareness and Aaron can give that to you so we'll link all his stuff at the bottom and from my perspective and the gameplay that I know the awareness and uh, preparation for this video and honestly with Aaron he's very good and I cannot complain or say anything bad about Aaron when it comes to his videos and how he does it. Is there anything Thank else? I really well, appreciate that. No, no, I mean it's, it's an honest opinion. Uh, I, 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 I play with so many people. Uh, good people uh, you know good players and some bad and you see the mistakes people make but when looking at your video it's educational and i i get more information sometimes even there's something i didn't even know it's it's possible even the best players need somebody to have a look and say, oh damn, i didn't know that and i've seen that in your I, videos yeah I, you're absolutely correct i I mean, I'm still learning myself. I I, hate, I honestly hate watching my own playbacks because I, you look at it, and I I just see so many mistakes for myself. But yeah, the just watching a lot of different content, you really learn. You like like you said, you learn a lot. So yeah. So guys, please go make a turn. We'll have the links below, and um, yeah, thank you, Aaron, for spending the time the time with us and having this interview. Uh, we would love to see you again in the future, of course. And well, guys, for me, it's a wrap. And today's episode for everyone, please like, follow, leave your comments. 
most of all, stay safe and keep saving. See you in the next one.